Okay, it's with um, uh, sadness that I <clears throat> report the, uh, the passing of uh, Brother Ati, the elder that I was recording out of Dimbaza. Um, um, but that's all I want to say on that term now. Uh, peace and blessings on the eternal soul, Brother Ati. Uh, but his passing brings up a thing. In fact, I, I mean, I'll try to link uh, the particular one I'm going to talk about uh, today on, on in, the, in, the, in the show notes. Um, but I was thinking because, uh, as you may or may not know, um, Quint, uh, Quincy Jones, a noted musician, uh, who was played with a legendary person who was played with everybody from Count Basie to Sinatra to or, or, all, all the way up to my, you know I guess you, you probably know from Michael Jackson for a stellar career one of his one of the albums that I really liked is an album called uh, Gula, uh, Gula Bhutan, uh, where uh, Valerie Simpson is singing a solo uh, there but I really love that, that that particular album uh, in fact it's uh, anyway. and, but this is an article uh, that appears in uh, the online uh, magazine or magazine Vulture. And uh, where the 85-year-old Quincy, uh, well, maybe he's going to be 85 anyway, he uh, just lets loose, <laughs> talks about stuff. I mean, I wrote a comment in one of the things that was posted, say that uh, take away from this, you really don't want to yeah, just, just look, treat everybody really good because when they get to be an older, they will dish on you. A lot of people, you know, it's always bogus, whatever it is, but. Um, what interests me about the, the, and I read the whole thing, you have to read the whole thing, put it in context, whatever have you. But one of the things that, that really uh, struck me is uh, when he was talking about uh, Frank Sinatra, because he worked with Frank Sinatra. And uh, back in this, back in the day where, you know, uh, uh, black folks, you know, because of, uh, you know, the system of uh, Anglo racist white supremacy, you know, as you would know, as the United States would call racism. Um, <coughs> anyway, in that system, you know, especially the Las Vegas clubs were a big, a big deal, and they would they wouldn't let entertainers uh, into or black entertainers uh, go in the front in the front door. Wouldn't let them eat, and, you know, the whole segregated segregation thing. Uh, forgive the noise. That's just students on campus. They just got back, and so whatever. Um, and usually they do these in the morning, but this is the afternoon, so I guess they're really getting rowdy now. I have no idea what happens on a Tuesday. Anyway, uh, uh, what happened was. Um, uh, I think uh, he's talking about well, Quincy, Quincy and his band, or Quincy and, and the band. He's, I guess he was playing with Count Basie at the time. Where he was with at the time, maybe it was just Quincy. Where he was at the time, um, uh, you know, he tells Frank, I mean, you know, Frank, well, Frank wanted to know what was going on. How come they had to eat? Blah, 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 blah. Of course, Frank knew. And uh, he says, so, I don't know where I'll, I'll deal with it. So as Quincy uh, relates the story, he gets a bunch of uh, what they call goombas, so a bunch of really big uh, Italian, people of Italian descent, you know, in other words, other kinds of white folks, to come in and, and basically go with, with these black musicians and sit and eat. Well, they didn't have any problems after that, you know. Remember, this is left a long time where people like Pearl Bailey and, and Sammy Davis Jr. and, you know, you know and Mills, but everybody was being discriminated against. They had to go through the same thing, go through the back door, da 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 was like the cotton club situation. Okay. So I didn't think that. I said that's kind of interesting. I said I heard this kind of story before, and when I remember it, I heard because I read uh, King of the Cats, uh, the uh, autobiography, or the biography, this or, no, no, the biography of uh, one of my heroes, which is Adam Clayton Powell Jr. And he says when he when he first there was a congressman that was just elected before. Maybe they both came in the same class, whatever. And he, when when Adam Clayton Powell Jr. came to Congress, the same thing. They had the discrimination. You know, the black congressman couldn't eat in the in the Congressional cafeteria, something like that. So what? So what? <laughs> and look, yeah, look. If there needs to be a bio flick of anybody, you know, I know they got the the, the Thurgood Marshalls and they got the Jackie Robinsons or whatever it is. But Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Man, you know, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, he goes in. Remember, Washington D.C. is surrounded by a black community, back, especially back then. Now, it's sort of like white chocolate city. Anyway, back then it was real chocolate city. We're talking about in the 50s, I guess, uh, early 50s, must have been here, early 50s, late 40s. It was the late 40s that got in there. Uh, I'm not really sure, I have to look that up, sorry. I do my research right now for those specific dates. Anyway, so he comes in, he goes to the black community, he gets the biggest, blackest dudes he can find, and he brings them to the congressional cafeteria. Sit down, totally integrated, very quickly. So the, the, it's interesting because here we have two situations. One situation, um, where one person, we're talking about Frank Sinatra, 
could call and, and end racism in, a, in basically an all-white situation, right? Then you have another situation where you have one politician, right, who ends racism in his circle. You, know, you see where I'm going with this, right? Just one person. Um, Brother Atsi was, was like that. He, uh, the, the, the story that I'll, I'll link to, and let me tell the story, I'll try to get the exact number where, where, where it is uh, on, on the counter. Uh, but he single-handedly uh, integrated the Eastern Cape of, uh, of Southern Africa, South Africa, as far as the stores, uh, there's, these, there's this chain of stores going on. Again, you have to refer to the thing. Uh, so what I'm trying to say, this is a, just, uh, Brother Atsi is a black person. So, uh, and, he, uh, and the stores, only had uh, whites and coloreds, you know, serving there, and they were treating the black people really bad when they came to the store. So you get that. So what am I saying? A uh, couple of takeaways I get from this, the especially this age of, you know, just you know, this age of what we are doing. Look, the only way we're going to end anything is the 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 people that hold the power. They have to, or the group that holds the power, there has to be a courageous person in that group that does something to alter that group think, you see? So, the, 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 so that's, that's it, you know? I mean, there's just really nothing else to say. I mean, that's my, that's my belief. You've got to alter the group think. And the only way you can alter it, not the only way, there's a lot of ways, but you have outside pressure, of course, but you have to have someone inside that says, no, we someone inside with power. Because the reason why this system keeps on going is because the people are just, 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 just puppet, puppeting the system Right, they have the power. None of them are going to break ranks. You see, so, so somebody will never going to break ranks. And so, uh, the only way to do it is one of them got to break ranks, or, or uh, I won't say revolution, but or something that has to happen to, you know, force that force that situation. That's the way it is. Uh, little report from me, T, from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.